Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another episode of the Model Railway News and here we are for the last edition of this series in 2019 because we're finally in December and let me tell you there is an awful lot of news, particularly new samples being shown off, uh, some that we've never actually seen before, so loads and loads of exciting stuff to get through today. Here we go, let's take it away. So we'll start off with Hornby, and there have been loads of new arrivals at Hornby this past month, probably just because Christmas is so close. But strap yourselves in, because there is a whole load of stuff to talk about here. First of all then, we've got a few new train sets, and I think the most interesting one, and the one that I've heard the most about, is the Great Western HST train set. Loads of people have messaged me saying, are you going to get one, are you going to get one? So you guys let me know, should I get one to try? They do look pretty cool, so maybe that would be worth a try. They also have their heavily weathered Franco Cross D9Fs in stock, which is very interesting. Uh, the Franco Cross D9Fs uh, look like this. Now, they are railroad models. Having said that, the level of detail isn't too bad. However, I am sure the weathering would do an awful lot to make this look even more realistic. So they look really, really interesting. And as I say, they are now in stock. Hornby also have their Northern Bell train packs in stock, uh, which includes, I think, a Class 57, as you can see here, with three Mark 1s. Now, at Hatton's, there's a price of £135 for that, which to me doesn't sound too bad. I think it is a relatively basic loco, and the coaches probably are as well. But even so, for quite a lot of train, I mean, that's four items there for your money, that doesn't sound too bad, and they certainly do look pretty impressive in that livery. There's also the special edition of the Flying Scotsman with the two tenders and the gold plating. Now this one is a little bit more expensive, I mean obviously gold isn't exactly cheap. The RRP is £259.99, although as always the retailers are selling them for a little bit less. Uh, £234, but still an awful lot of money. Now I've always had a bit of a problem with those, particularly with the gold plating. Now on the one hand, obviously the gold plating isn't exactly realistic, so that's a lot of money to pay for a loco that isn't you know, 100% accurate. However, I get it, it's a special edition, it's supposed to be a little bit unrealistic. I don't think Hornby is suggesting that the Flying Scotsman ever appeared with the gold plating on it. However, the problem is, if you run that loco on the track, the gold plating apparently will be pretty much immediately damaged, which means you're paying £259.99 or whatever you're paying for it. It's a lot of money at the end of the day. And you either can't run it, so you're paying a lot of money for motor and bearings and pickups and all these things that you can't use because you won't be able to run it, or you're paying for the gold, which you won't be able to keep because you'll damage it. So yeah, it's just a bit troubling, isn't it? You're paying for a lot of stuff that you can't use. As I say, you either can't use the gold because it's going to get damaged, or you can't use the mechanism for fear of damaging the gold. I do think if they did it without the gold, yes, it wouldn't be quite so special, but the price would come down and I think people would really like it. I, for one, I think would pretty much definitely buy one if they did it without the gold. So I think it's also well worth Hornby considering doing that. They also have some new arrivals from their one-to-one -one collection. And basically what that is, is as you know, at Hornby HQ, there are some locos living there now, which is very exciting. And Hornby have produced some of them in model form. So the ones that have just arrived are the Black Fives, which look very impressive. Uh, quite expensive, obviously, but they are good models, so I've heard I might need to try one. And I suppose the most impressive is the Bittern with the two tenders, which have also come into stock. And that's the interesting thing. There's no gold plating or anything like that on the Bittern. And I've been told that they actually sold a lot better than the Flying Scotsman models did, so it's very interesting. Hornby also have the latest release of their L&YR Pug in stock, and here is mine. I've never actually owned one of these, so I did pick one up. They are pretty old models, but the price does reflect that, I think. However, I've not reviewed mine yet, and I'm hoping, fingers crossed, to get the review crammed in before the end of the year, so do keep an eye out for that if you'd like to see it. They also have the latest batch of Ruston shunters in stock, including my favourite, which is the Princess Anne one, or is it Queen Anne? I can't remember now. I think it's Queen Anne, isn't it? Uh, so I had that pre-ordered, so hopefully I'll be getting that pretty soon, although I'll probably have to wait now until January before I review it. But hey, that's something to look forward to, isn't it? Also, at the Wally Model Railway exhibition this year, Hornby did have some samples to show off. The most interesting of which is one I've already talked about briefly, but it was this, the Princess Royal samples. And as you can clearly see, there has been a lot of progress behind the scenes going on with those. They were initially, uh, I think they were announced to be arriving in December or something, or probably even before December. Uh, whether or not that's actually going to be true, I can't say. I mean, it, did, it says on the Hornby's website, winter 2019 to 2020, which is 
is ambiguous. I think if they were going to be here before Christmas, it would say so on Hornby's website. But hey, who knows? Uh, however, they have newly announced a Firebox Glow for the Princess class, which I don't think is something we've seen from Hornby in many, many years. I mean, that takes us back to the Triang M7 and the likes of that. So that's very, very exciting. Can't wait to see how the princesses turn out. And hopefully, as I say, it won't be too long before we see those. Hornby on their engine shed blog have also revealed samples of their latest class 395 Javelin. Now this is not a new model, it has been around for a little while, but this is certainly a new version of the model that's never been seen before. So it's number 395013, it's named the Hornby Visitor Center and there is actually a real one named Hornby Visitor Center which was unveiled back in June of this year and so to commemorate that Hornby have produced their own version of that model and as I say yes they have just shown some samples of that which is pretty good stuff. Finally, on the subject of Hornby, I'm super excited because I did a collaboration with them for Christmas this year, which was super cool. Now, I think it's already been released. At the time of filming this, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it came out on Thursday. If it did, I will put up a link there so that you can check it out. If not, just forget I said anything, but I really did want to mention that. Okay, next up, some updates from Backman because they had some new things to show at Worley. Once again, I've talked about this already, but with the help of Callum Wilcox, I can show you a little bit more of what they had on offer. So first thing then was the Midland 1P samples. Now I've already shown you my footage. Uh, I saw the BR black one, but I think inside the Backman members tent, or whatever you call it, I don't, it obviously wasn't a tent, uh, but he got some footage of the Midland Railway Maroon version, which looks fantastic. The BR black version looks pretty smart. But the, yeah, that maroon version is where it's at, isn't it? It looks absolutely fantastic. And thank you very, very much to Callum for letting me use some of his footage there. Really can't wait for those. I think I do have one pre-ordered, actually. So, yeah, maybe I'll be getting one. I forget now. Uh, they also, as I've already mentioned, had some samples of the 94XX Great Western Pannier Tank on display. Already briefly mentioned those, but once again, this is the news video, so I've got to show it to you. Great to see some progress going on there. At the time of filming, there is still no sign of the E1 in the NER green. Uh, now, apparently there's been a problem with the wheels. I've not had this straight from the horse's mouth, but according to one source, they had to send them all back. Um, well, it's not 100% clear. Basically, it was uncovered that the wheels on the original models were unprototypical or something like that. And so either they had to be sent back to the factory to be rewheeled, or they had to be kept back at the factory to have the wheels changed. As I say, whether that's absolutely true or not, I can't say for sure, so don't take that as golden. But I am told that that is the reason for the delay. Hopefully, though, they won't be too long because I've been itching to get my hands on one for ages. So, yeah, do keep an eye out on those. Next up, Helgen have revealed some samples of their new and improved Class 33s, which have the high intensity headlight. Now, you can buy them in quite a different number of combinations. First of all, some versions are available just on their own for as low as £100, although they may be the slightly older version without the high intensity headlights. I'm not 100% sure on that. You can also get them in a train pack with four wagons for about £200, so, you know, 25 quid a wagon. Mm, not too bad, I don't think. And you can also get them in twin packs as well, as you can see just here. So I would say the value there is not too bad. However, looking on Hattons at least, it does seem as though most of them are not in stock yet. But existing versions of the Helgen Class 33s are indeed available, as you can see. So feel free to check those out if you like. I will include a link in the description. There's also been some other very interesting but also slightly baffling news from Helgen. Uh, strap yourself in for this one because they have announced the release of a brand new batch of Helgen O2 Tangos. What an interesting thought that is. So I think if I remember correctly, there are six new versions, six new variants of these announced, including a Great Northern a GNR version, which does sound interesting. But as I say, on the other hand, quite a baffling decision that because, well, they didn't exactly have the greatest reputation, did they? Now, the biggest problem with this new release is that the estimated price on Hatton's website, at least, is £160. Now, I would say their reputation as being one of the worst models, or in fact, well, in my opinion, they're one of the worst models I've ever reviewed, will make that price, at the very least, a little bit problematic. As a result of this really bad reputation, retailers like Hattons have had to absolutely slash the price to nearly half of that estimated price 
device that Helgen have released. Um, at the moment, for example, Hattons are selling existing versions of the Tango for £84, and as a result, that will have devalued the model. Nobody in their right mind is going to be willing to pay double that just for a new version, so I have to ask, what on earth are Helgen thinking? And I also have a few questions as well. If people are expected to pay £160 for a loco that's previously been available for 84 so about half the price, there need to be some changes made, there need to be some issues addressed. For example, is it going to have an updated mechanism that is befitting of a loco that costs £160? Because the poor quality mechanism that I found inside mine is definitely not acceptable for that price. Is it going to be assembled using different materials? Is the body actually going to look like metal this time around instead of rubber? Are the separately fitted metal parts actually going to look like copper and brass and not some sort of tainted sickly Innsmouth gold or something? And more importantly, are they going to be assembled in a different factory by personnel who know what they're doing? Are they going to wear gloves so that there are no fingerprints all over the thing set into the model with glue? Are they going to know how to fit the separately fitted detail parts so that they'll actually stay on the model? Because there was a lot wrong with some of the previous batches of these, which has to be addressed if anyone's going to consider paying £160. But frankly, even if they are addressed, would you buy one of these, given what we know about them already? Do let me know. Very, very interesting decision of Helgen to continue making these. If I were Helgen, I would have put them to bed. But then again, I'm not Helgen. Thank goodness. Next up then, some very exciting news from Hattons, because their much-anticipated Class 66s are basically pretty much ready to go. They have revealed their final production samples, and in fact I was even lucky enough to get one, so here's one here that I have loaned from Hattons. I took a look at this in a review, and if you'd like to see the full review I will link it up there. It is fantastic stuff though, spoiler alert, amazing loco. I'm calling this the best diesel ever, and I genuinely do believe that. A wonderful model. Um, I believe if you pre-ordered these uh, before the deadline, you will be getting yours in December. If not, the general release is in January. And if you, you know, if you've got one pre-ordered or if you're thinking of getting one, definitely go for it. You will not be disappointed. I was amazed by mine, genuinely amazed. And uh, that doesn't happen all that often. If you haven't checked those out yet, uh, there is a link in the description if you want to see the pre-orders. They also have some severe bargains going on. I'm going to talk about some of the Christmas bargains at the end of the video. But one that I did get to look at was the Class 121. I actually, Hatton's actually offered to send me one of these on loan. But then I told them, actually, I saw the deal and bought one for myself. So I already had one. But they are selling them off super cheap. I paid £89 uh, for mine, which is about half price. But after I did that, it was revealed that they were selling some versions even cheaper than that for £79. Now, I did have a few issues with mine. None of them were sort of terminal issues, as I would say. But I think for the price, it's worth checking them out. But if you want to see the review, obviously, look that up if you're not 100% sure. Next up then, another update from Worley, because while we were there, we saw that Dapol had released some wonderful samples of their latest 43XX Great Western Moguls. Now, these are looking absolutely superb. You might not be aware of this, but there is actually a 43XX that has been on the market already. It looks like this. It's the Backman one. Nothing wrong with them, really, but they are very, very dated by modern standards. The level of detail is very, very basic. The mechanism leaves a lot to be desired. There was certainly no... Well, my version doesn't have the facility to be DCC equipped. Um, so, yeah, there's an awful lot of room for improvement with the existing 43XXs on the market. And so to see one looking so fantastic at Worley was really quite refreshing. And they're not too unreasonable either for a tender engine of that size. The, well, the rough price is about £135.96. I think, and they're due in early summer 2020, so really not that long to wait, and the progress does look superb on those, so I think I probably will get one, because I'm really interested to see what they turn out like. KR models have had some very exciting things to show and talk about, particularly the first sample on display of their GT3 gas turbine. Now, there was a lot of concern initially about their competence, I guess, in creating a model locomotive, and a lot of people didn't even believe that it existed and that they were actually producing the thing. So seeing the first sample at Worley there, I think, has put a lot of minds at ease. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic. Apparently, they are still on track for delivery on Q2 2020. But they've also announced a new diesel. Uh, it's called the Fell, number 10100. And this is a really, really fascinating locomotive. 
locomotive, to be honest. It was designed by H.G. Ivat, who we know designed a lot of steam locomotives for the LMS, which is very interesting. But these diesels are completely unlike any other diesel that we've seen before. Very, very unusual, particularly with the wheels, of course. It was also a pretty early diesel. It was built in 1949, which is, of course, well before what we would consider the age of diesels. So it's a very, very fascinating machine. The model itself is said to have quite a few interesting features. It's going to have a 21-pin DCC socket. It's going to have directional lighting, a die-cast chassis with a central motor and flywheels, and a great array of quality detailing. So at the moment, there's no firm price announced. They're just taking an expression of interest. So if you're interested, if you are interested and you think you'd like to buy one, um, head over to the KR Models website and you can express your interest there. And I think the procedure is if they get enough interest, they'll go ahead and produce the model. And I guess we'll, we'll hear about the price and we'll get to put a deposit down. But yeah, interesting stuff, exciting stuff. And it would be amazing to see a model of the Fell come to fruition. So there definitely has been a lot of news from Worley in this video, but I just can't help myself. There's some really exciting stuff, particularly from Oxford Rail, who also had something new to show. And this was the, I think it was the first publicly seen samples of their Class J27. As you can see, they are looking fantastic there. And they're actually coming pretty soon. They're expected in the first half of 2020. And I think they were only announced this year, weren't they? So it's kind of less than a year or about a year's turnaround for those, which is really, really good. And the other great thing, of course, is that they're not that expensive. They're going to be available for less than £100. I think £94 is the rough price, well, the estimated price from the retailers. I can't see it deviating much from that, to be honest. But they do look fantastic, don't they? For the money, I think we've got a lot of promise there. Really looking forward to those. And sure enough, I do have one pre-ordered, so I'm definitely going to be reviewing one when the time comes. Great to see progress on that. Just can't wait for the release now. Very exciting times. Lastly then, because it is Christmas, I'm sure a lot of us have been opening advent calendars. Uh, I certainly have, even though I'm an adult. Maybe that's a bit embarrassing. But either way, adult or child, it doesn't matter. Advent calendars are nice, aren't they? Who doesn't like chocolate? However, if you're not interested in chocolate, or if you're interested in other things besides chocolate, I know that is hard to believe, but some people are, there are some advent calendars online that you can check out uh, from Hornby and a few of the retailers. So do check these out. Hornby's advent calendar is up there. Every day there's a different competition or deal or whatever that you can look at. Hattons also have their 12 deals of Christmas, which have been pretty interesting so far. So if you fancy a bargain, check that out. And also Rails of Sheffield have their advent calendar as well, where every day there's a different bargain for you to check out. I've had my eye on all three of these, just in case there's anything really cool that comes up, which I might want to buy for a review. And as I say, if you enjoy a bargain, I would recommend taking a look every day as well, just in case something pops up that you fancy. For the time being though, my word, that was an awful lot of news. I do hope you enjoyed hearing about it all. Uh, there's certainly been a lot to get through, but it's a very exciting time and I think 2020 is going to be even more exciting than 2019 was. For now though, thank you very, very much for your support on the Model Railway News videos. This has been the first year I've done them and it's been really successful, so I'll certainly be carrying on into next year, particularly with the announcement of the Hornby 2020 range, which I will be doing a live stream for. For the time being though, have a fantastic Christmas if all you watch is my Model Railway News videos. If not, I will definitely see you before then. But for now, thank you for watching, thank you for your company and support, and I'll catch you very soon. All right, cheers folks, take care of yourselves. Thank you.